Hello and welcome back to the POV Micro Farmer. Um, today I'm going to do a bit of scything. Um, not too much, just a bit. Um, so I'll quickly run through the, the, the initial setup. Um, so you got your scythe um, and it's got two handles and then you've got two different types of stone which are sharpening stones. This is the 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 harder stone and this is the softer stone um, and they're literally called wet stones because they need to be I've actually got a little chip there look it's okay <clears throat> um, I'm not very good <laughs> but there needs to be um, water they need to be soaked in water for about 10 minutes first which is why I have this little old bread tray so I'm gonna put these in here first and then just walk over to my little hose and soak these in water and the kind of the water just basically acts as a lubricant while you sharpen your your blade so I'm gonna leave that oh it's a bit full actually they just need to be kind of like immersed in the water um, so I'm going to leave that here for about 10 minutes. And I'm going to do something else in the meantime. So this bike lock, I'll tell you about in a second. So let's move on. Let's just move this into the field where we're going to, where we're going to work. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to do too much. Um, just a just to kind of do a little bit, just like maybe half a line or a full line maybe. Um, probably about like 30 minutes of, of work. Um, because I'm quite tired today. Um, I don't know why I just woke up a bit tired. But it's all good. I want to try and, you know, keep on top of this. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to leave this here for 10 minutes and let that kind of, well not even, not even 10, just close to 10. And then I'm just going to put this scythe, um, I did a course on this, a training course. If you are going to get one of these bad boys, it's all technique, all technique. So I thoroughly recommend doing an actual physical course. My initial plan was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just watch online. And then the very first video I looked onto, he said, hey, this is how you scythe, but if you are going to do it properly, do a course and then watch this video and so I did the course and then never watched the rest of the video <laughs> so good advice and he got a view out of me as well so so basically yeah, yeah, I learned that you put the side in the long grass itself um, so that people can't step on it and hurt themselves um, and there's a special way of holding it as well when you're walking along you hold it face down like this and um, because if you trip you're probably not gonna really hurt yourself other people hold it like you know the back of their head or like this whatever like that and you don't want a big spiky blade near your face so you hold it down like that to kind of keep it away from your body and keep it safe and just kind of you know it's still a big massive knife so you gotta be careful um so while those wet stones are getting wet i'm gonna put this down i'm gonna leave my gloves here <coughs> and go up to the very top corner up here which is the boundary of the of the of the micro farm um, basically when I was doing my rounds recently I was just walking around and I kind of noticed that the fence up here um, had broken um, I'll show you in a second it was actually it was it was being held together with like a piece of cord like bungee cord or like not even like it didn't even look like thick bungee cord it looked like the cheap stuff that you get from the pound shop or the euro shop so just to kind of and the gate was just wide open and it's not a security thing, actually, I don't really care, because no one's going to, what are they going to do, steal my, steal my overgrown grass? <laughs> um, but, you know, you don't want to leave a gate there in case any, someone comes in and just tries to do a bit of a cheeky fly tipping, or more importantly, if the dogs kind of go for a little experiment, a little wander, and end out on the road, because it's a small, thin, country road. Um, and... There's no speed cameras or lights or signs or anything. You do get people like kind of um, speeding. 
not too much, but it happens, you know. So, don't want to lose my dogs. Yeah, so here's the gate. Look at, <laughs> just do a back and forth comparison. Here's where, <clears throat> here's everything that I want to size before March of next year. It's October now. Um, you can see the small, tiny garden patch that I've done at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's such a lovely view though. The trees are starting to turn. There's the road. I'll just give you a quick, and here's my fence. Like, it's just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what that was ever gonna do. Um, but I have this kind of bike lock, which I don't really use anymore. And it's a combination, so I can hopefully just wedge it in there and stick it in. But let's go have a look at the road anyway. Oh, I was gonna do a before and after. So here's, not before and after, but a comparison. So here's, here's our field. Here's what we've got to work with. Here's what I've inherited in this real life game of Harvest Moon. And hopefully it's gonna look something like that without the cows. <laughs> Maybe I have some cows, that'd be kind of cool, get a cow. Um, get some milk off them. Um, but they, you, need, you do need, it's a, they are herd animals, so you think you need a few of them. Um, so maybe just a couple of goats or some donkeys. But there's our next door neighbour. Um, I've spoken to him once, seems like a nice guy. Um, but yeah, look at the view. It's just so many trees, and you can kind of see up there, like they're already starting to... I'll just turn my head, I think I'm looking down a little bit, I'm not really sure, I don't have my... Um, I normally use my phone as a little monitor. But the last video I did, I accidentally pressed the button. I went into slow-mo mode for like half an hour. Um, I think I could fix it though, so it's not an issue, but I just don't want to do that again. Um, but yeah, so there's, a, there's the view. Really is incredible. And those trees are starting to turn. I think I think as the as the season goes on, more of them will turn and it'll, look, it'll just look amazing. I can't wait for it, it's gonna be great. Um, and then we've got this big, long road where very few people use this road, but when they do, they sometimes come fast. It's either it's either boy racers or tractors. Um, and very few in between. But those trees are starting to turn as well, hopefully. I just realized I've, I've, I've raised my eyebrows a few times and it's like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's my eyebrows raising. So <laughs> I'll try to avoid doing that. Um, okay, anyway, back to work. So, I mean, if anyone saw my, my chicken coop repair video, um, hopefully this, this repair job will go a little bit smoother. Um, I mean the code is literally just... Um, let me think what's the best way to do this. So can I fit this in here somewhere? Where will it go? No, it will not. Okay. So I was like, yeah, this will be smooth, this will be easy. <laughs> Damn it. What's the plan? Um, maybe I can just... just lift this up a little bit and kind of twist it around. Things just don't go easy, do they? never gonna go. Okay, well, add that to another, add that to the list of crushing defeats. Actually, you know what, that down there looks a bit closer. It's maybe here. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Okay, so now if they want to break in, all they got to do is uh, cut that barbed wire. Easy. <laughs> so, totally secure. Um, but definitely better than it was. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> I'm just going to throw this in the bin. Um, but <clears throat> it's something that I wanted to do since yesterday anyway, so 
and I do need to wait for the for the for the whetstones to soak through a little bit. Um, so yeah, plan for today is do a bit of siding and then gather the grass um, and bring it to the pig farm, the pig barn, pig barn, um, and dry it out because we are in October now. And so, I mean, I'm new to this whole hay making business. I thought hay took ages to make. I thought you had to leave hay out and like leave it in the sun for like six months or something like that. It, it's not that long at all. Like in good weather, you can make some hay in a couple of days apparently. Um, but we don't get good weather in Ireland. So I stick it, there's like, I'll show you anyway, you've probably seen it, but there's a, there is a barn where the pigs live, Wigsy and Woo. The pets, they're not eating, for anyone who doesn't know. <clears throat> um, and on the other side of that, there's just an extra, there's a roof with no floor or walls or anything like that. And that's where I've been, um, that's where I've been um, drying out the hay and then turning it every, every every couple of days. So I'm just gonna put it there. So I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna let that, let that soak for just a little bit more and I'm gonna get the little bag um, to transport the hay. Um, or do you know what, nah, let's just start, let's start siding, let's side now. We'll get the bag when we're finished. Let's get into the action. <clears throat> um, you can wear gloves. I don't. I like to have a better feel of the of this of the of the metal. Um, some people do this barefoot, um, which is probably ill-advised in this kind of thing. There's like nettles right there. I'm using wellies today, um, but you don't really have much danger of chopping your feet off. The danger is um, is when you hello Woody, hello. If you haven't met Woody before, he was rescued by my my brother who passed away recently um his previous owners were not great at all it's a bit of an understatement they um come here when he was when he was a young guy he was hit by a car and they never took him to the vet um and he runs a little bit funny um but i don't I, i've heard that that's actually not related apparently he was born with wonky legs and the car crash is just a coincidence, but I'm not quite sure. But he's a very, very good boy. His name is Woody. I think he's a field spaniel. And he just wants to be... He just wants to be good. Everything you do. He'll come up and ask for permission to get on the sofa. Um, he's very obedient. I don't know. I don't think he's previously done his training, but I think he just... He just does it. He just follows you around, wants to be with you and hang out. And like, you know, he does like the animals. He gets excited by them. Um, and he would chase them properly, but if you tell him not to, he won't. So he'll, he'll like, sometimes I get into the field with the chickens and he'll be like, oh, quick, chickens, let's go and say hi. And then you say, no, what do you come back here? And he, and he will. So it's great to have him so obedient because we haven't trained him at all. Um, I think he's about eight or nine years old, along with, oh, you okay, Woody? Come here, you, say hi. Good boy, good boy, well done. Look, he's a very good boy. Let's go say hi, let's get it nice. Blah, 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 blah. Good boy. Okay. So, the way this works is you do the, the thicker, rougher stone first, and then the smoother stone. And you kind of rest the blade, not in your armpit, but like use your, well, my non-existent bicep to, 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 to hold the blade and use the edge of the, the stone and you go with a little bit of pressure. And you only use this one at the start of the day. You only need to do this once. So what this does is it kind of, it takes little bits of micro metal and, and shaves it off and sharpens it down. And then you go on the other side, spin it around, and with longer strokes, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that, you can see the little silver, hopefully, there, but I don't know if you can see, but like, you can kind of see where the blade changes. And it's kind of what this does, is in the back, you, you shave off the metal that you've just cut. So you do it with this one first, 
and then the softer one. Just do the inside, sorry. And like I said, I'm very inexperienced, you know what I mean? This is not, I, you know, I, I do apply a good bit of pressure, but I do a one day course and I've sized by myself for, in total, only a, a, a grand total of a few hours. What's that, a bee or a fly? A little, uh, little winged insect just landed on the top of my head. <laughs> but yeah, a little bit of pressure. I'm like, it's okay, I'm gonna hit myself with the thing and that's okay. And then the other side, and you just wanna make sure this is nice and wet because that works as a lubricant for the blade itself. And then that side. And you can actually, you can... It sounds great. And the thing is, you need to use this one um, every couple of minutes. You only you don't get that much sizing before you gotta sharpen it again. It stays very sharp, but it does get it's very sharp blade, but it gets weak. It gets soft pretty quickly. Um so what you do is I've got this little copper container that we bought with the scythe. And then you put a little bit of you put this thing into the copper container and then use a bit of your water just fill it up and you don't want it too wet because otherwise it's just gonna just a tiny bit just half full you know what I mean and then you attach that to your belt like that or in my case the trousers of my crappy work trousers um there's twinkle hello twinkle hello Woody you still here and then you kind of just like if you can see that you just kind of dip it in to the other side and then you're ready to start sharpening again. Plus it's cool having a little copper pot attached to your trousers. I use these trousers because, um, first of all, they're too big for me. And second of all, the um, pockets are awful. Every time I put something in the pocket, it just instantly falls out. Um, the amount of times I've dropped my phone. So I'm just gonna move this stuff here, just out of the way. You know what, I don't need any of that water anymore. I'll leave my gloves there. This satellite dish can move out of the way. <laughs> I'm just gonna start around here to kind of get a nice section like here, I think. So basically you hold it with your two hands, a little square stance, and I'm gonna make a mess of this. You wanna just kind of like you want to you want to get low to the ground. This isn't the teaching how to do it, by the way. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. And you just kind of pivot. Like that. And you want to get a whole semicircle in front of you and that's why I'm going to go and as you can see the, the, the thick grass starts here and I'm kind of putting myself in the middle of that just so I can and if you do it right and I'm definitely getting better because when I first did this nothing was happening <laughs> it doesn't you know you can tell I'm not like you know I'm not I'm not putting a huge amount of effort into it I probably do do more effort than I need. Oh, and if you get stuck, like say like, you can see that red thing, you just keep going. And it's just millimeters at a time. But you make good progress. So you feel like you're going nowhere. Oh. And every soften you hit a rock. And I just want to try and get rid of that. And every soften as well, you kind of, I dig into it because we're on a hill. And it's quite fiddly. And in terms of resharpening, You only resharpen when when you feel like you're not making progress anymore. And it depends on lots of things. It depends on the 
thickness of your blade, or sorry, sorry, when you resharpen, sorry, it depends on the thickness of your grass, um, the strength of your technique, you know what I mean? Have you hit any stones? Have you dug it into the ground? Um, you know, what are you cutting? Because it needs a lot of... Um, see, I think I'm... I think I'm ready to... That doesn't mean five minutes. Oh, watch out, Twinkle. Um, but the idea is that as you make your way forward, you're kind of cutting the grass. It goes through there, cuts through, and then deposits itself on the left of you. So we've done this much, which is like six feet. One, two, three. Three or four steps for me, I'm six foot three. Um, and then all this grass is stuff that's been deposited. And also like, if you look there, grass is very, very wet. Even when, it's, even when it's dry outside, grass is wet. So you need to clean your blade quite frequently. So what you do to do that is you just get a piece of the grass that you've already used. Just get a nice handful. And this is where you can cut yourself. This is where you're most likely going to get injured. I have cut myself before. But you just kind of just, just rub it down with some fresh grass, you know, and then the other side. And what you don't want to do is, you know, that's nice. It's just like that. The way you cut yourself is when you go like this and you grab the bottom and go like this. You can go like this on the top if you need to. That's fine too. Just don't go like this and try to slide underneath there. But once you've got a nice clean blade, just throw it back down and continue on working. And the idea is, while you're going through a section, if you get stuck, see I'm getting stuck here, you just go back to where you started and go again. But, oh. And like, like I said, I'm probably putting more effort in than I need to, but only because my technique is not as good as it could be because I've only been, there's a big stone, look at that. See that? That's what I call a blade ruiner. I've just been throwing them in there. And then, they never told me to do this. This is a, a Jordan innovation. Sometimes you just get stuck here and I just go <laughs> just to just to give that a little beard trim. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way better to do way to do it. But it's nice and rhythmic, you know? Don't I'll just be quiet now for a while and just we'll all just listen and experience this together.
So that's what I've done so far already. Like it is, it's a nice process. You can kind of tell I've veered to the left here. I should have stayed more straight that way. But I think that's just what happens when you're going downhill. Or it does when I'm going downhill. And I don't know if you can hear that sometimes you can hear these kind of creaking a little bit. And if that's the case, then what I actually need to do is tighten it up a little bit. So your scythe is adjusted to you and your height. All these holes are for different places where you put your handles. And then the blade itself is is also adjusted to mat the, uh, to give you a good angle so you can see that there there's two holes they're just for um they're just an allen key and you tighten it you kind of loosen them up adjust the blade up and down depending on the angle of what you like and then tighten it up and then some people even put like a little block of wood in here to make it stick out a bit more and um, so it's fully adjustable um, and <clears throat> you kind of want to get there's like a call like a in the circle I think it is so the way you kind of adjust where you want your blade is that you rest the second hand this handle on your underneath your knee and you pick a flower so if you see that little I'm not sure if you can see that if it's too far in the camera but you pick something like that and what you do is you kind of just stay really still lock your knee we'll go with this do you know what I'll go just to go for something a bit more noticeable I'll go with this, the tip of this red bit here. And what you do is you lock your knee and what you want is that this edge, this corner, the very bottom, the very tip of the blade, when it goes along, it should kind of be, I think it's supposed to be inside. I need to see that actually and make sure I'm, I'm, either, I'm either on the line or outside the line, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I need a refresher course. Um, but maybe next time I'll do an adjustment video at the very start as well. But for the most part anyway, I feel, I feel like I'm cutting some grass here. So I might just go back up here, do a little bit more to try and straighten out my path. Like here. And then I'm not sure if you can hear twinkle barking with the echo but she's got a tremendous bark oh just ripped up half the soil there <laughs> I need to concentrate more um, but she barks and then a couple of seconds later, the, the woods bark back. And then she has barking competitions with herself. Um, anyone who does know scything, please go easy on me, because I'm very new to this. And I could do with some tips and some help and a refresher course. Because as I just admitted, I don't even know how to align my blade properly. I forget whether the tip is supposed to be under or over the back but basically yeah I just wanted to kind of give you guys a very short it's so addictive it's like it's like foraging you know I me mean? you've ever gone blackberry picking and you're like oh, okay I'll just stop after this patch and you see more and you just keep on going um, it's very therapeutic and it sounds great too Okay, I 
probably need to resharpen my blade again quite soon. So, actually I don't, I'm just, oh that was nice. So what I'll do now is I'll just call this a day. Like I said, I didn't want to do too much. It's just a kind of an introductory, an introduction to, the, to what I do with the scythe. And then I'll clean this, bring it back along with my other one. I mean, I could sharpen that now and be ready for next day, but I feel like it's nice to sharpen in the morning just to kind of make sure. So I hang my scythe up on this little hook here and this table is in the way. But what I do is I just kind of grab it and just attach it up there and then it's kind of out of the way there. It's not going to fall, it's not going to slip. Um, so yeah, so we use this little skip bag to Is there a rake? No, I'll get the rake. I mean, really, what I like to do is do that for a couple of hours. Um, but for now, I thought I'd just give you the the short process of everything that goes into scything. Um, and then the other thing you have to do is like, if you ever get to do it yourself, is, I totally recommend that by the way, do do it yourself, it's really nice. But if you do do it yourself, then don't overwork yourself that you can't collect the hay as well and roll it up. So on a hot day, you just leave it out for a few hours and then later on you come back and turn it that day. Um, but sometimes you need to kind of collect it. So this is where I get my gloves because as you saw there was a bunch of nettles in there. I saw a little bit of dog poo as well because you know the dogs are going to go where they want to go. And this is a great place better than my house. And Basically, I mean, like, I don't even need to really And as you can see, it's not very clean or neat But the pigs are gonna come in here and dig all this up. So I'm not looking for like You know, I'm not looking to play golf on this thing. It's just to cut the grass and get a free bed For the lads And then what I've done is just kind of rolled it. And it gets very heavy very quickly. And that's the other thing as well, I didn't want to cut too much because last time I cut loads and I had to do a couple of trips with these, I had just three of these massive bags and there's a bigger one than this one even. And it's, well, it's like, you know, it's one end of the field to the other. It's like, I don't know how long of a walk it is, but you're going to do it with me in real time, so. But you can really see how much hay. I mean, this grass is, it doesn't even look that bad. 
and then you pick it up and you realize how much is in here. technique is okay which today it was better than most days I am getting better so if you've got good technique then it does all mostly deposit itself in one section for you it makes your life a bit easier how full that is just in this small section like Now that I've picked up all the, the really heavy stuff, I'm just going to give this a quick rake to grab anything I missed, which I'm sure is plenty. There we go. If your land is flat and you're more experienced, then you can definitely cut better and neater and smoother than me. If you want to, like, if you want to cut your grass, you can get to the level where where I'm not. But by the time by the time I get up there. You have to play lawn bowling on this thing, hopefully. In terms of my skill and technique will hopefully improve it better. Because that's the thing with like, with sides, that's what, that's, you know, bowls like lawn bowling. That's how they, um, that's how they stick up the grass, you know, and like, and golf as well. Like you think, when was the electric lawnmower made with a ride on lawnmower? It wasn't that long ago, like golf's been around for hundreds of years. Um. You wanted a green, you get a good scyther, and he could have a beautiful green for you, and he could do that. Or she, probably most likely a he, to be honest with you, um, at the time. But yeah, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted a nice putting green, then a professional scyther would come in and give you a perfectly even, beautiful putting green. Um, you know, I imagine Wimbledon tennis court, same kind of deal. So I'm just gonna drag this. Like that was, I don't know how much I did. Let's just do a quick pace count. So I started here and you can see where it gets drier. So it's like, like I said, I'm six foot three. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten and a half, eleven paces. So whatever that is. Is what I did, and I got a like a, nearly a full full bag of this stuff, and this is a big bag. 
like you can hold a thousand kilos <laughs> so not a thousand kilos of, um, of grass in here oh, thankfully but it's you know The bag's gonna be too big to fit through this gap. So I'm just gonna reef it up over the fence. I could be stronger, to be honest with you. Sorry for swearing, I try not to see what's going to happen. Oh. <laughs> well, I went over. Put this here. Oh, no. well, that's annoying. To be honest with you, that's all right. Not bad at all. Grab some of this. Okay, I'm gonna go get a wheelbarrow. some onions by the way that we picked I'm just leaving them there to dry so they last a bit longer and this little hand sickle is, is what inspired me to get a scythe and I'd love to kind of restore this and attach it to another stick and just... it was already here before my mum moved in probably, probably quite old B box. Um, I think my mum's gonna put it in. You can see this one's ready. Should have, should have done bees today. Is that rain? Oh, oh no. Oh jeez. Hopefully this won't be too big. It's 
mostly holding its position. Oh, much better. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, you don't, you actually can't do too much if it's gonna rain soon. If it's not gonna rain, you've got a few days of drying, then you can leave it on the field and you can do much more, but because we need to, well, I, oh, it's a wee business. Because I need to manually transport it to a drying facility. Then, you know, if you do too much, then you gotta do two or three of these motions in one go. And it's not fun. Especially when the dogs dig holes in the driveway. <laughs> Twinkle just digging a big, nasty deep hole for me because it's nice of her. It's a good thing to do, really, isn't it? Um, so, Wooksy and Woo will be happy to see me. Actually, I'm not going to go through the field because I'd have to hop over that electric fence. I'm gonna go down the front garden, or out the front door, over the hole and into a rock. And take it up the road and into the back field. From there, woo! I never understand the phrase, were you born in the barn? Meaning, do you leave the door open? Because all barns have doors, I think. I don't really get it. Someone wants to explain that to me. Always because you want to escape the barn? Or is it some sort of weird? Jesus metaphor, was he born in a barn or a manger? I don't know what a manger is. I feel like manger. I've only heard the word manger when it's related to Jesus. If anyone in the comments knows what an actual manger is, should I build one, let me know. <sighs> There's Wigsy and Woo, look. Hello, Wigsy. <laughs> I'll say hi. Hello, you're a good boy, aren't you? Don't put your head through the fence though, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Ah, oh, he's very cute, look at him. He's a good lad. Good boy. Hello. Ah, oh, you never get to see your beautiful eyes. I'll see you in a minute, I've got some hay for you. So, <clears throat> so yeah, if you are new to watching this channel, please do help me out with what, which way you want the direction to go. You know, like I was a bit more quiet this episode. saving my voice, not waffling on. I still was waffling on, but there was moments of quietness, moments of tranquility. Speaking of tranquility, there's a river. But yeah, leave a comment. If you hate the sound of my voice, tell me. I don't care, I don't get offended. I've got thick skin. You let me know if you want to hear a whole quiet episode. The thing is, can't be completely quiet, you're gonna hear me doing that kind of stuff. Getting up the hill and 
I'm breathing heavily because I'm not fit. <laughs> but apart from that, I can I cannot talk. But for the moment, I've been trying to keep a fairly continuous, steady stream of chat, which may be interesting to someone. Like I said, you can mute me or tell me if you quiet if you want to hear nature. And what other content do you want, you know? Like, when I start harvesting veg, do you want to see me cook it? Do you want me to prepare it? Do you want me to, you know, make something out of it? I can, I can whip up a few meals if you want. Um, do you want me to take the dogs out for a walk? Do you want to come along with that? Do you want me to film my drive home through the mountains, get some scenery to the dash cam? So here's all the hay I've already made, by the way, sorry. Um, but yeah, tell me what you want and I'll, I can give it to you. Um, this is all pretty dry. It doesn't really, it's been turned a couple of times. You can kind of tell it's quite good. There is a little bit of green left, but I don't think you ever get it perfect. And just move this. This was the crate. See this here? This was, this is one, the only wall left of the crate that I haven't salvaged for. The, the, the replacement pig house which will feature very soon and this stuff here is stuff that I'd already dried before this is even more dry and you can see I kind of blocked it off with this big wooden log and there's a little bit of straw that was left over as well you can kind of see the difference between hay and straw ah hello woo you coming to say hi Hello Wigsy, you come to say hi as well. I'll check your water on the way out. So I suppose what I'm going to do is just move, just to give myself, so I'm not putting wet, te wet hay on top of dry hay. And this is why I got the gloves, because I've got a funny feeling that there's going to be loads of mice and stuff living in here. <laughs> and as much as I want to be a hardened country boy, I'm still a bit of a city slicker at heart. And Tiny mammals scare me when they jump out of nowhere. But, uh, just a big piece of metal. And another big log. So I'm just going to move all this over there to the to the dry pile. Although some of that actually in the middle doesn't look that great. That needs a bit more, a bit more of a turn actually. there and just see it's a bit more green it's a bit fresher yeah I'll be chopping wood soon preparing the wood for the fire because it's going to be needed. Um, okay, that's enough space for this. So, basically, all I'm going to do is just like I do have a pitchfork, but I don't think I really need it. Look at the difference in color. Look how fresh and green this is. I get a. I'll do a. A proper observation. In fact, maybe I might even just move this dry stuff to this side so it's closer to. It's 
got ourselves a little production line going on here. Okay. So yeah. Just look at the difference in colour between the dry stuff's been there for a couple of days. It's a little bit wet even there still. Let's get even the, let's get some really dry stuff. Let's look at that. Go. Oh. Much drier, much cleaner, it's like doesn't smell like anything, unfortunately. It smells like grass. <laughs> um Yeah, so And then the idea is I just kinda spread it out, get a bit of air into it, basically sieve it like flour. And then the idea is that you just come back every couple of days and toss it, give it a little stir, you know. I try not to have, I try to make it fairly even and not too deep to give it more of a chance of drying out and getting an airing and stuff because if you let it if you get if it if it sticks together if it's too if it's too tight if I kept this in the bag for example I think what'll happen is that it will just kind of start to it'll stay warm effectively it'll stay warm and wet and anyone who knows anything about bacteria that warm and wet is exactly what they like and um, so it'll start to rot and then when it starts to rot, let me just lock this door. I'm gonna go back through the pig farm. Um, but yeah, when it starts to rot, that's when, if you've got a bag of salad, because you know, a grass, hay, dry and hay is literally just a big bag of salad. There's absolutely no, no difference. No difference whatsoever between hay and a big bag of salad. Basically, if you've got a bag of salad, then, if you ever leave it too long, you notice that it gets all like sludgy and wet and watery in the bottom and stuff like that, and it's just inedible. And hay kind of does the same thing. If it's too tight and too compact and too warm, because it does keep its heat for a while, it does retain heat quite well. I'm gonna grab a bunch of this and just. over this little fence here. Ha, ah, they love the hay. Is that nice, Wigsy? <laughs> Is that good? Do you mind if I... Okay, you can have whatever you want. I'm just going to take this bit and just put it in your front door. <laughs> Look at him. He's gathering it for his little bed. So I... What's kind of cool is I'll put this here, right? And you can kind of see there's a lot of, hey, Wigsy. Hey, Woo, sorry. As you can see, there's a lot of hay in there already. But if I put this in their front door, I'll come back tomorrow and it'll be gone. They'll push it in, build themselves a little house, a little nest. Especially as, it's not cold yet, it's not that cold. It's been cold bits, but as the weather gets colder. Can I have this, Wigsy? You want it? You want to keep it? As the weather gets colder, they really like to bury themselves in this stuff and get deep in the hay. And snuggle up nice and tight and stay cozy together. Watch some TV, play some poker maybe. You know, wake up. Some porridge, some oats. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here and I'll come back tomorrow and it'll be gone because they will push it in, they will use it for make their bed. I scratch myself. Do you want to scratch? Woo.
<laughs> Look, you can see it. he's moving his back into it. And those are good boy. Like I said, these guys are pets, not for eating. Um, buddies, not bacon, is my motto. Um, All right, well look, that's gonna wrap up today's episode of the POV Micro Farmer. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I did. Thank you. Goodbye.